Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you you can take a simple, single, one-shot shaker sample like this and turn it into an authentic sounding shaker loop like this. So let's cut the intro short and get going. All right, so I've pulled in a drum loop from a pack Havana that actually has this real shaker in it. And I want to have this basically as a reference. So we have something to strive for. So if we know if it sounds realistic or not. So let's take a quick listen to that loop. So I am not a good shaker player, or I don't even know the proper term for it. Um, I can fake my way through it, right? And I have that egg shaker right here. It's duct tape because I stepped on it once, but it still works. So the reason why I have that loop in there is because it gives me something to aim for and I'm recreating that sound with a sample or with multiple samples. Now, if you don't have, if you've never played a shaker, you might be surprised at just how many different sounds you can get out of a little instrument like this. So for instance, if I hold it to the side like this, we of course have different dynamics. You guys all probably know that. But depending on how you hold the shaker and how you move it up and down, you're actually gonna get a very different sound. Check this out. So I am going to go just normal, holding it on a side, and then I'm gonna do a little circle motion. Check it out. So I am showing you all this in my mediocre shaker playing because I, I really, I really want to highlight this point and drive it home. If you're trying to get a realistic shaker sound, you need more than one sample to do it well. You can get by with doing one sample and just tweaking the velocity, but it's going to sound more like a programmed hi-hat than an actual shaker. If you can find a few different samples, especially if it's from like the same shaker that you have forwards, backwards, maybe up, down, wh whatever it might be, it becomes really easy and fun to create realistic shaker loops. So for instance, I'm gonna go to our Havana pack here and we're gonna pull in some random samples and I'm just gonna highlight a couple of these, command click, and, and I'm just gonna take a couple, right? And we're gonna drag this into our drum machine designer and logic. All right, so before we actually look at how much easier this is to do using multiple shaker samples, and how much better it sounds, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks you can use to make a single sample sound good. Because if you can make a single sample sound good and you apply those same tips and tricks to using multiple shaker samples, it's gonna sound really nice. So here's a single shaker sample. Very robotic. Here it is with a drum groove without a shaker sample. So it's very robotic. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is tweak the velocity. Now I'm gonna just try to find some type of pattern here. All right, and then I've copied and pasted that out. It sounds like this. So it sounds pretty good. Now there's another thing you can do. Obviously you can change the length, the duration of some of the hits. Now if you're working in a step sequencer, that's gonna be called gate. If you're working in just like a piano roll, just change the length of the MIDI of the note. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go to gate here and quick side note, make sure your sampler that you're working with is not set to one shot mode. Otherwise a gate won't do anything. Uh, you, even changing the length of your MIDI note won't do anything. You wanna make sure that's set to, sometimes it's called retrigger mode or it just makes, or sometimes in, a, in Ableton it's called classic. It just allows you to make use of an envelope so you can set the release and the sustain and the decay, which is helpful. So here we're just gonna change the length of some of these hits. All right, the last thing you can do is make things not as robotic in terms of being right on the grid. So to do that, I'm going to right click and we're gonna hit convert to MIDI region. Now in my MIDI, I'm just gonna add a little bit of swing here. Now if we play this with the beat. All right, so because I have the samples actually set up and they're multiple samples, I'm actually just gonna play it in because it's gonna be quicker and easier because the humanistic element of me playing it is gonna sound more authentic. So let's record that in right now. So I played this in by hand and I quantize it. This is what I have. 
Or so it already sounds better, right? Already sounds more authentic. So I can follow the same steps that we looked at for the single sample, changing the velocity and maybe the length of some of the notes, then adding maybe a little bit of off-grid swing. So let's go through with my velocity tool here and let's change some of these values. All right, now let's change the length of some of these notes, right? Let's make some of them as long as they can be. So they over, basically they'll play over the other one a little bit. All right, and then last, let's add a little bit of swing. Now I don't wanna add a consistent swing to everything. We might just add a little bit of swing, just a couple of the notes here and there. And I'm doing this kind of randomly and I'll see how it sounds with the actual beat. And there you go, we have a realistic sounding shaker loop. Guys, that's gonna sum up the video. If you have any questions or comments, post those, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.